In today's tutorial, we're going to create this really cool logo reveal animation. You can do this with a text or with any SVG as you please. Today, we'll be using an SVG so that you can figure out how to do that in case you wish to do so. So let's figure out how we can create the same. In our default scene, the first thing that we have to do is enable the import export SVGs add-on. We go to our edit preferences and here under the add-ons tab, we can search for SVG and you have to make sure that the import export scalable vector graphics is checked. Once that's checked, you can go ahead and select your default cube and tap X to delete it. Then press file import and choose scalable vector graphics. Then navigate to where you've stored it and import it. For this tutorial, I'll be using the SpaceX logo. Now, after you import it, you might feel like nothing's been imported, but if you actually see that there are curves in the side, it's probably imported just way too small. So if you can zoom in, you see that it was imported, but it's very, very small. So I'll just select all of them and press S50 to scale it up by 50 units. Then I'll press RX90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now sometimes the SVGs aren't perfect so you can first start off by fixing the SVGs. So in this case this particular line is missing on the A and this little junction is missing on the E which prevents them from getting their faces. So let's select that particular curve, press tab to go into edit mode, just select these two and press F to connect them and we can do the same thing for the E over here. So let's select it, press tab, select these two nodes and press F to fill it. Now they still don't have the actual solid color so let's select them, go to the curve properties over here and change this to 2D and make the fill mode as front. Similarly, you can do the same thing for the bottom of the E, change it to 2D, change the fill mode to front and now you should have it. For the materials, you don't have to worry because we'll be using our own materials either way. Next, you can select all of these again, press Ctrl J to make it one single object. Now you can call this as solid SpaceX and we'll be creating an outline SpaceX as well. So press Shift D and name this one as outline SpaceX. Now. For the time being, we'll select the solid SpaceX and hide it from the viewport and we'll work with just the outline space X. Since we want this to just be an outline, we'll change the fill mode from front to none and that way we get just the outline. But if you switch off your overlays, you won't be able to see anything. So we need to give it some thickness. For that, we expand the geometry tab and go to the bevel and just increase the depth to something really, really small. We can go with 0.001 and even that seems to be way too large. So we'll make it 0.0001. Now this looks fine enough and with that, we can start off the materials for the setup. For that, we'll set all of our defaults. We'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 150 so that it's a five second long animation, change the output folder to wherever you want it to be, change the file format to FFmpeg video, encoding, we're going to change the container from Matroska to MPEG4, and we're going to keep the output quality as per substitute lossless. Then we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll press this button up here to change the viewport shading to rendered so that we can actually see the changes that we make. Now we'll press this plus button to create a new material and we want the material to not be a principal BSDF but a mixture of an emission node as well as a transparent node. So let's select the principal BSDF and tap X to delete it. Then press shift A and search for an emission node as well as a transparent BSDF and we have to mix these two using a mixed shader so let's press shift A and search for a mixed shader. Now we can plug the emission into the first socket and the transparent BSDF into the second socket and then take the output of this mix shader and plug it into the surface of the material output. Now we need to tell Blender which areas should get which of these two materials. So let's press Shift A and search for a wave texture. And because we're using a curve, we have to use the UV coordinates so that the motion is along the curve. So let's select this wave texture, press Ctrl T with the node wrangler enabled to add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and change the texture coordinates to UV. Next, we'll change the wave type from sine to saw and we'll start increasing the scale. Now in case playing around with the scale isn't helping you see anything, it might be because we still haven't enabled transparency in EV. So the transparent node is not being seen. So we'll go to our material properties over here, go to the settings and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha hashed. The reason why we're using alpha hashed is because alpha blend will not allow for nice screen space reflections to occur and alpha clip won't give a nice trail. That's why we're using alpha hashed and this is what it currently looks like. So then we can go ahead and reduce the scale till we get just a few lines present on each of the letters. So I'll maybe bring it down to 0.5 or 1. And now to actually get these lines to move around the letters, you can play around with the X location on the mapping node. So that way they'll travel around the particular letter. However, we need to make this much better. The first thing that we can do is press Shift A and search for a color ramp node so that we get better control. Plug it in over here and start dragging the white in to make some areas completely transparent. 
rendering, we'll also switch off overlays so that we can actually see what it looks like. Next, we want to use this same thing to control the actual strength of the emission. Now, the output of this wave texture is coming between 0 to 1. And by adding a power node, it'll keep reducing lesser than 1. So before we add in the power node, we'll actually search for a math node and we'll add in a very small positive value. So maybe 0 0.5 itself is good enough. And that way, some values will still remain below 1 and some values will go above 1. And now if we search for a power node, which is a math node set to power, we can actually go ahead and increase this exponent to something large and the numbers that were greater than one or the areas that had the wave texture greater than one after this ad will become very very high and the areas that still had the wave texture lesser than one after the ad will become very very low. Now we can plug this into the strength and the exponent value was too high so I'll change it down to like five and start increasing it till we get something really nice. Beyond that, if we actually take a look at it, we're getting the opposite effect of what we had for the transparency. So essentially we wanted this end to be the brightest and this area to fade off. So we have to fix that. And that's as simple as inverting this wave's texture. And to invert it, you could either use a color ramp and just switch the colors. But another way that we can do it is by searching for a math node and switching it to subtract and having this be one minus whatever value we're getting from the wave texture over here. So we plug this into the second socket and change the first socket to one. And now by making it one minus whatever, we flip the color ramp. And now we can again play with the exponent until we get what we want. So I think an exponent value of five will be good enough. And this looks all right. We now need these to move and we can do that by playing around with the X location. We'll do that during the animation section, but I don't want this to continuously move for the entire animation. I want it to start moving and I want this entire thing to become transparent after a certain amount of time which is when the logo actually appears. For that, we can actually use a math node on this mix shader over here. So we press shift A and search for a math node, plug that in over here and we keep it on add. Now, when we add a value of one, everything will become completely transparent, which is what we want at the end. And if we have a value of zero, we're going to have the exact setup that we had before. So we're going to animate between one to zero. Next, we need to play around with the color of the emission or the color of the emission. We want some random sci-fi colors to be present or since this is spacex we'll use some space like colors so pinks and blues and yellows i'll press shift a and search for a voronoi texture and i'll start off by plugging the color into the color and then i'll control the color using a color ramp so i'll press shift a and search for a color ramp and i'll plug that in right here now i'll add in three stops so i'll add in one more at the center by pressing this plus button and now i'll change the three colors to the three space colors that i selected let's change the first one to a pinkish color the second one could be maybe a bluish color and the last one maybe a yellowish color then you can go ahead and increase the scale very very high until all three of the colors start appearing and my choices of colors brings in quite a bit of white i'll change this from linear to ease and that should bring in more colors and have lesser of whites but i can always just duplicate this blue node and bring it closer and closer just till you get a nice distribution so once you're happy with it you can actually change these colors around over time by changing this from 3d to 4d and playing around with the w value so if we move this w value the colors will slowly change over time so we're gonna add in a driver for this during the animation section next we can add in the material for our solid spacex so let's unhide the object and just hide the outline for now now the spacex logo has everything as one color except except for this particular line over here. So to change this particular color separately, we can change this from a curve to an object. We first select it and then go to the object menu and choose convert to mesh. And now it becomes a mesh. So if you actually switch on overlays and press tab, you can go into edit mode. Now you can go to the material properties first, add in a new material, call this SpaceX, and then press this plus button to add in a new material slot and press this button to add in the new material and call this just X. Now we can press tab to go into edit mode and hover over this particular line that has to have the X material and tap L to select everything that's linked, then select the X material and click assign. Now you can press tab to go back into object mode and just give these two the two colors that they want. So for SpaceX, we'll select the principal PSDF and tap X to delete it. Then I'll press shift A, search for an emission node, plug the emission into the surface and change the color to the SpaceX blue. If you want to know what that color is, just go to the SVG material that you had, select the base color, go to the hex value and press control C, then switch back to the SpaceX material that you just created select the color, go to the hex and press control V. And that way you get the exact SpaceX color. You can do the same thing 
looking for this particular line of the X. So let's select it, change the material to that SVG material. And you don't actually have to select it. You can actually just hover over it and press Control C, then switch back to the X material, select the principal PSDF, tap X to delete it, press Shift A, search for an emission node, plug that into the surface, hover over the color and press Control V. Next, to allow for these to also have nice reflections, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha hashed and do the same thing for the SpaceX material as well. Go to the blend mode, change it from opaque to alpha hashed. Shadow modes you can have for none for everything because we don't need any shadows in this particular animation. Lastly, we want some floor with a texture. So I'll press Shift A, search for a mesh plane, press S to scale it up and then press GY to just bring it to the start of SpaceX and then press this plus button to add in a new material. And I'm gonna keep it as a fairly simple material which is increasing the metallic all the way to one reducing the roughness down to 0.1 and then pressing shift A and searching for a Voronoi texture and using this as the bump. So I'll press shift A and search for a bump node to convert this to normal data. I'll plug the color into the height, change this from F1 to distance to edge and reduce the randomness to zero, plug the distance into the height again and connect this normal into the normal. Then to actually see it, you'll have to start increasing the scale to something really large. Let's go with a value of 1000. And to just add in some contrast, I'll press shift and search for a color ramp node, plug it in right here and bring the stops in. So take this, slide it towards the center, take this and slide it towards the center. Beyond that, I might play around with the scaling and everything a little more just before rendering, but that is the base effect. So we can slide it in and get something like this and that's all right. Next, I'll go to my world properties and just change the color all the way to black. And I'll select my camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, then R X 90 followed by GZ to bring it up by a little bit and then press GY to bring it back and then GX to move it to the side. Then I can press zero to go into my camera view and continue to move it back on the Y axis by pressing GY till we fit everything into the scene. Once you're happy with the positioning of everything, I feel like there's a little bit too much reflections happening here and that's because of this light that's present. So let's select the default light and press delete to remove it. Then you can switch off overlays and start off with the actual animation. For the animation, we'll expand our timeline by a little bit and also unhide the outline space X. Then I'll select my solid space X, go till about frame number 100 and make it transparent. To make it transparent, again, we should have done this during the texturing section, but I forgot. So let's just add in a mixed shader just like before, as well as a transparent shader and plug this BSDF into the second slot of the mixed shader. Now, whenever the factor is zero, it's going to be completely emissive. And if the factor is one, it's going to be completely transparent. So this I've done only for this X material. I'll do it for the SpaceX material in a second, but on frame 100, we'll keep the factor as one and tap I, and then we'll go to like frame 120, reduce the factor down to zero and tap I. Next, we'll go to the material properties over here, select SpaceX, add in a mixed shader and add in a transparent shader, plug them in, increase the factor all the way to one on frame 100 and then tap I, then go to frame 120, reduce the factor down to zero and tap I. And that way the space X will slowly fade into the scene. Next, we have to remove the outline that was going on. So let's select this outline SpaceX object and to add in the animation of these lines moving around the object. We'll just go to the mapping and add in a driver for the X location. So let's press hash frame by some large number. Let's go with 200. And that way they should just be slowly moving around the object to get a realistic idea of how fast they're moving. Change the playback from play every frame to frame dropping. And that way you can see whether they're moving fast enough or you need to make them move even faster. So if you want to make it move faster, just reduce this from 200 to 100. And that way they'll be moving faster. Next to play around with the colors, go to this for my texture, W value, make it hash frame by 1000 and that way the colors change over time as well. Next, I want these colors to actually be much less saturated. So I can press shift A and search for a hue saturation value node, plug that in over here and just reduce the saturation from one to a value of 0 0.9. And that way they're just a lot less saturated. You could always make this brighter as well by increasing this power value. And I think that looks good. I might play around with the colors just before rendering, but we need to get rid of these outlines when the SpaceX logo comes in. So let's go to around frame 90 and then hover over this add value that we are using before the mix shader and tap I and then by frame 110 or frame 120 itself will change the value to one and tap I. Beyond that, I also want it to slowly fade in. So let's give it one second to slowly fade in from nothing. So I'll select this keyframe, press shift D and bring it back here. And then on frame one, I'll just reduce the value or increase the value to one and tap I. That way it starts from nothing, slowly fades in, goes around a few times and then disappears as the SpaceX logo appears. So that's actually all there is for this animation. 
and if you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and press render animation. I'm sure you'll be able to implement this technique in even more creative and unique ways and just elevate your animations to a whole other level. As usual, thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far into the video. The watch time really helps me and I post videos every single day. So I'm sure there's something out there for you to create. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and stay creative.